this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about masking as far as material is concerned in Blender. Now, before we begin here, you're going to need some sort of shape and you're going to want to have a material applied to it. Now, I'm working in the shading tab where you can see I have my material node here as far as the principled BSDF. But also, too, I navigated on my desktop to where I have all of my textures as far as the layout goes. Now, one of the simplest ways to create a mask is under the Add, there is a color option where you're mixing RGBs. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the Mix option and just kind of take you through this a little bit. So first off, you have a Factor option. That's where your mask is going to go, your mask texture. That is going to be the factor that affects colors 1 and 2. Now, by default, as you can see, you do have the color pickers right next to these. However, per previous videos, you may want to click, drag, and drop one of your images, as far as being a texture is concerned, to attach to one of those colors. So I'll go ahead and start out here. I'm going to grab this yellow abstract here, and I'm going to attach it into color 2. So that's going to override the color picker. And for this first example, as a mask, I'm going to use the self-created one. And for color, we're going to tie that into the factor. And now if I come over, and for the mix, I'm going to tie that into the base color there. You can see as far as the layout goes, if I take down the specular a little bit, and I also pull down as far as the overall color there, you can see that speckling effect that I had from the previous mask there, where it's actually being applied onto the image here. Now, another option that you have here whenever you're working with these type of options is I now have the mask in place, but maybe for instance, I wanna tie in another texture. So let me grab the clouds here, and instead of worrying about a color, I want to use clouds instead. So now you can see as far as the color space is concerned, I have a much different layout as far as the colors go where you can actually see the clouds coming through and layering on top of the abstract as far as the white areas of my texture is concerned. This is probably one of the bare bone options as far as being able to come in and work here. You also have some other options in here that you can play around with as far as the different overlay, soft light, etc. that you can work with. I do want to take a moment though, and I'm going to delete clouds, and I'm going to delete the self-created. So we only have the yellow abstract going on here. And once again, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab the other mask. If you recall from a previous video, I used an actual image and grayscaled it to make a new type of mask. And I'm going to tie that into the factor. And now what you can see there, as far as the layout goes, you can now see how you have that kind of cutting occurring, but also showing through as far as the graphic is concerned. So there you can actually see part of the windows as far as the layout goes, and the mask being applied on top of the abstract there. So that can add for some really cool effects as far as your layout goes, if you're looking for something a little bit more abstract. And I'll actually turn on the lighting and shadows there. You can see it a lot better when it's actually kind of in its render element there as far as the layout. And I can even come in now and kind of tweak as far as the coloring goes for the overall mask there of the factor. And that's just some of the bare bones of being able to generate a mask. So you can either, again, you can either use a graphic and grayscale it, or you can create your own using a software program such as GIMP or Photoshop.